Dear students, in this lecture, we shall take a real-life example of a function. Let's get to it. This is basically known as Schultz demand function. He estimated it for U.S. cotton demand, and he did it by using the data from 1915 to 1919. So he took this data and he tried to estimate the demand function. And that demand function is mentioned here. As you can see, demand of cotton depends upon price. With this value, which is a constant, and with this value, which is being deducted, actually, which is the product of 0.3 with price. And this negative sign has its importance. And actually, it shows the negative relationship between price and the quantity demanded. This is the, the uh, usual connotation of law of demand, and we know that there is a negative relationship, provided the citrus paribus. Now, let us assume that the value of the uh, variable P, that is price, is 8. Once we know the value, we can substitute it into the uh, Schultz demand function, for example, and putting that, we shall be solving the equation and we'll be getting a very simple answer by using the simple algebra. And this answer is 4 units. So it shows that if price is 8 units, the demand or the quantity demanded would be 4 units. Let us assume another possible value of price and that is 10. If I put 10 into that function again, it will look like this and it will give me the answer which is 3.4 units. Now I should notice that the answer has reduced from 4 to 3.4. I won't stop here, I will take another value in order to ascertain the trend that is going to prevail. And that is by taking 10.22 instead of 10 or 8. Putting this value into the function, I'll get this expression and after solving this, the answer would be 3.334. So now you can see 3.4 has reduced further to 3.334. And on the other side, the price is increasing from 8 to 10 and the, 10, uh, and the value 10 further increases to 10.22. And the quantity demanded, it was 4 units before and then it decreased to 3.4 and then 3.334. This sounds very familiar. It sounds like law of demand. And when we have law of demand, it is our old habit to make a graph of it. So let's see how these points can help us to make uh, the graph of this function. Um, we have uh, chosen the x and y, the first quadrant, as we know both of the values, they are positive. And these are those points that we were talking about that we just calculated. Joining the lines, uh, joining these points, we get this line which shows a negative slope. And negative slope is what we expect out of the law of demand. So you see, this law of demand presented by uh, Schultz follows the standard theory that we have studied. Because in, in, in real world, the, the relationships, they can be a little disturbing or unusual. They might not be showing the same relationships. They might not be as negative as we want them to be or as positive as we expect them to be. But this case is following that certain theory which is uh, we have studied and this is law of demand. Now let us experiment a little bit further with this and that is by assuming a value of quantity demanded instead of price. Now we are assuming the unknown value to be given. Uh, and so using this value, we can find the value of the other variable. And that is simply by putting this given value into that equation 
and after putting this value we get this expression which further gets solved and gives us the price so you see that it's not just output that we can calculate by using the price we can do the process other way around and we can find the value of the other variable by assuming the value of the first variable in this way law of demand is solvable using the standard tools of mathematics and we just applied it on the famous schultz demand function